Hello beautiful people. Happy Tuesday to you all. Just to talk about why I'm trying to be healthier. Um, and basically I'm just trying to, you know, work out a little bit more. Try and get back in shape and lose some weight. But I think the main thing is just so that I'm healthier in general. Uh, you know, eating tons of vegetables and you know, some fruits and stuff, not, not quite as much fatty food, trying to cut sugar out completely. Uh, it's just, it's healthier. I want to be as healthy as possible. I don't like being sick. And I'm not getting any younger, so the better I eat now, you know, I'll make for a better life later on, especially when you have like little Maddie or, you know, possibly another one along down the road. I, I want to be able to play with them when I'm in my 60s you know, or my grandkids when I'm in my 70s. That's probably my biggest motivation at this point. I've always been into like working out just because, you know, I played rugby. I enjoyed working out, you know, through high school, college, and then especially after college. That's when I really got into rugby and just lifting weights in general. And now it's more just for personal reasons. It's not for performance reasons. And even when I was playing rugby and everything, I was still 290, 300 pounds. Uh, I was I was pretty strong, and you know, for a fat guy, I could run. This is what I mean by for a fat guy. But even at this size, I could still play rugby. You know, I, I was decent. I'm not going to say I was a great player, but I could hold my own. And, you know, I could run the Army 10 miler at this weight. So, I was pretty fat, but I was still, I don't, I don't know if you want to call it a fit fat or what. But now that I'm older and I've had some injuries and my back's a little messed up, I had to get smarter about how I'm working out. And, you know, I can't just go down and squat 400 pounds anymore because that would crush my lower back. I wouldn't be able to walk for the next week. So I have to do more stuff like one-legged squats and, you know, pull-ups are probably my favorite exercise. I'm terrible at them, but I'm getting better. I can't run distance anymore. So, like the other day I went out and I, I ran a mile and then did some sprints. And I was laid up for about three days because my back hurt. So I, I have to be very careful. But losing weight is going to be the primary thing. You know, with less stress on my joints, you know, if, if I can get down to around 200, 210 pounds, I'm at pushing 250 right now. I figure if I get down there, then that'll open up a lot of doors. I'll be able to do a lot more just because I won't have that day-to-day -day grinding with that extra 50 pounds on me. Really, my healthy journey is just that. It's about being healthier, you know, heart health, body health, and I mean, there's even stuff out there that says you're smarter when you're healthy. So I want to be as smart as possible. My goal weight in all of this is somewhere in the you know low 200s. You know, if someone asks me what I weigh, I want to say 20 something, 204, 209, somewhere in that you know 200 to 210 pound range. I think for my size, you know, one, I'm going to look really good at that that weight, but I don't know. There's something about you know, you have to be 200 pounds to be man, if you ask me. <laughs> you're not man size unless you're 200 pounds, so I don't want to get all skinny. As far as body image, you know, I do, uh, unfortunately, I carry extra fat in my chest. I think there's, there's probably a few guys out there that got their man boobs. And that's probably the biggest thing that, you know, drives me as far as body image. So in order to help counteract that you can't really spot reduce body fat like i can't say oh, i have man boobs i'm going to do more push-ups that's not going to get rid of the fat in that area all that's going to do is build build the muscle behind it and actually make your man boobs stick out further so what i you know i said said a minute ago that pull-ups are one of my favorite exercises and pull-ups are going to help widen my back going to help pull my shoulders back which is actually going to tighten up the chest area so once i do lose all this extra fat you know, it'll help tighten it up, just make me look a little better, improve my posture. Um, Pull-ups are going to make my back wider. I'm going to work on my shoulders. 
I want to work on my arms just because, you know, having a big chest and big, big arms makes you look good. Again, it goes back to the manly factor. The one workout that I'm most consistent with is my core workout. And it's just a couple of plank exercises. Um, last time when I had to go to the hospital for my back, when my back was hurting real bad, I went to physical therapy and the therapist taught me a couple of simple planks. So I do those and like I said, that's, I'm most consistent with that. That's the first thing I do when I go to work out. And it takes me 12 minutes and you know, I sweat a little bit, it's not too bad. So it's something that I can do every single day. Sometimes I do it twice a day. But that core stability is gonna make you a lot stronger in the long run. And then beyond that, since my injury was to my lower back, I need to work on my whole posterior chain, which is, you know, my hamstrings, my glutes or butt muscles, my lower back. So squats and lunges and stuff like that, that helps work on those areas. And it'll just get everything tight back there. And I'm not so much worried about how my butt looks or how, how my thighs are. If that area is strong and I have good posture, then I'm gonna have less aches and pains. My lower back isn't gonna bother me. I mean, it, it hasn't bothered me in a while. So, you know, I think it's working. The lighter I get, the better it's gonna work. Plus doing those core exercises, you know, it's not like I'm gonna be bulking up my waist. It will slim my waist. And then if I get the bigger shoulders and the bigger back, you know, I get wider, I'm gonna look better. So the, the looking good is secondary to the feeling good. I'm gonna show some little clips on what I'm what I'm doing to try to eat better, uh, the things that I'm preparing. My work lunch is probably the biggest thing, and I'll tell you right now, it sucks. It, it's not good, <laughs> but I you know I take it with me, and everything that I eat is healthy, and there's a reason behind you know why I eat it, and so that that's why I do it. And also I'm gonna show how I make my smoothies. I need to be more consistent with the smoothies. You know, I'm not, I don't do it every day. I should just to get those extra nutrients and make sure I'm keeping my calorie count up. One tough thing I've found with dieting is actually eating enough. It's easy for me to starve myself. Like I can just go without eating and then I get to the point where I'm really hungry and I eat way too much at once and that just it, it slows your metabolism down so I need to be more consistent with how I eat and the smoothies are one way that I can you know you make the smoothies you put them in the fridge and then when I wake up I have breakfast ready for me and it's a great breakfast because I use I put protein powder in it but it's uh, plant-based protein so it's a different type of protein uh, there's a lot of berries which you know provide a lot of nutrients and antioxidants help help keep your body ready to work out um, just ready for the day so it's actually another very healthy meal it's not bad it's not delicious but it's not bad some of the other things that i try to eat are bananas um, eggs and when i get home from work i try to eat an egg every night i don't know if it's 100 percent true or not but i have read that Eggs are, number one, they are good for you. They do have some cholesterol in them. But for the guys out there, that cholesterol is converted during your sleep into testosterone. <laughs> so I think an egg a day is probably a better idea than not eating eggs because of the, the cholesterol content. Then for dinner, when we have dinner with the family, I'm not, I'm not worried so much about what we eat. I'm not gonna count those calories. I know that if I sit down and I have a decent sized meal, it's probably gonna be in the four to 600 calorie range, maybe a little more if we're having something fatty. Try to eat mostly vegetables, you know, but I'm not gonna deprive myself of the stuff I like. You know, I'm still gonna have shrimp alfredo. And I think on the page you've seen that we have, we've made shrimp alfredo with zucchini noodles now. And that's actually really good, and that's a better option. You can, eat, you can eat a ton of that and not get all that many calories. So if you have any questions for me, um, feel free to leave a comment down below. Chrissy will let me know. She'll pass it on. I'll try my best to answer them. I guess 
we'll probably be doing updates to this video over the next few months. Uh, my goal, like I said, is to get in the, the low 200s and the goal time frame is by January. So I have about 170 days to lose between 36 and 45 pounds, which is a totally realistic goal. It's less than two pounds a week and I shouldn't shouldn't have any problems doing it unless I have some major hiccups. That, that's another thing I, I, need, I should mention for any people out there starting something like this. You are going to have hiccups. You are going to have bad days. And I, I've found, because I've done a lot of dieting through the years, but I've found that a lot of times when you, you make a mistake, you know, you screw up, you're over at your mom's house and she makes a gob cake. You tend to say, oh, I screwed up, I'm just gonna throw this all away. You know, screw this diet, I can't do this anymore. It's gonna happen. Just put it behind you, you know, try to limit it. And also I found that a lot of people like to plan cheat days, like say, you know, gonna be good all week, and then Saturday I'm gonna go out and, you know, I'm gonna have a whole cake and a 12 pack, something like that. And that, that's, that just leads to failure. If, if you're planning to be bad, then that means you're not actually trying to be good, if that makes sense. If you want to approach this as a, a lifestyle change more than a diet, because diets are temporary. So hopefully, you know, this sticks with me. I, I know I'm not going to be able to go as hard as I'm going right now my entire life, but I won't need to once I get rid of all the extra weight and I get in better shape. But as long as, you know, 80% of the time I'm good, you know, I'm, I'm not going to care if I have a hiccup like I just, I just said, you know, put it behind me, be good again, not worry about it too much. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, like I said, we're going to make smoothies, we're going to make my lunch, we'll probably do a couple cooking videos in the future. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll talk to y'all in another video. Bye! Peace. Uh, broccoli is probably the biggest part of it. I only eat about six ounces, and it's only about 60 calories. But that's what fills me up. So I like to get the florets now, the ones that are already cut. These ones are from Walmart. Costco sells bigger bags, of course. But then I also chop off as much of the stalk as I can because the stalk, other than fiber, really has no nutritional value. So I try and pack as much into a bag as I can. Plus the stock stalk tastes like crap. Not that broccoli is real good, but it's one of the healthiest things you can put in your body. If you take a sandwich sized Ziploc and stuff it pretty well, you'll come out with about six ounces. Some people out there, when they count calories, they like to count exact calories. I'm not that concerned. So if I'm off by a little bit, it doesn't really bother me. But just to show you, this is an old cheap scale. It's not really all that accurate to begin with, but it gives you a rough idea. So you just set it. And, well, that one's actually a little heavier than six ounces, so, hey, bonus. Just a quick cleanup tip. If you put your paper towel at the end of your cutting board and throw all your scraps on there, then all you gotta do is pick it up and throw it away. Bruh. So, pickles. First off, pickle juice is really good for you. It's uh, basically the, the original Gatorade, as I like to call it. It does have a lot of sodium in it, so if you have a high sodium diet or you have a problem with sodium, you might want to lay off the pickle juice. 
the juice that's in the bag, I pour in my tuna just to help take away some of the tuna taste. But I also eat jalapenos. We'll be bagging those up next. Well, cucumbers are just good for you in general. And then when they're pickled, you have the added health benefits of vinegar. They're just one of those healthy foods. And if you want to zoom in real close here, here's a nice little side bonus. Calories, zero. Like I said, I do like to drink it. <laughs> All right, and the last of my vegetables, jalapeno slices, is to help mask the flavor of broccoli and the tuna. I'll open the little bag and I'll take a jalapeno slice and then a couple, like a handful of broccoli. I'll just cram it all in my mouth at once. It makes the broccoli taste a little better. And then whatever jalapenos and juice I have left over, I pour in my tuna and mix that in there. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of tuna, but it's so cheap and so good for you that you just can't, you can't beat it. Plus it doesn't need refrigerated. There is something about the thermogenic calorie burner thermogenic benefits of eating spicy peppers like jalapenos I don't really know all too much about that I just know that I like the taste and as far as vegetables go really can't can't go wrong that's about two ounces right where I work there's nothing around us it's not like I can run out the Wendy's and grab a burger or chick-fil-a so th this is all I take with me, and that's all I have, so... An ounce of almonds and an ounce of walnuts. That's where the bulk of the calories come from. This whole meal, what you see right there, plus... I think two bananas? No. Just this is 600 calories, about 600 calories. And that's 360 of them right there. So there's more calories in this than all of this combined. I don't know what it is about broccoli, but if you keep it sealed in the bag too long when you open it, it smells like someone just farted. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really unappealing to eat something that smells like farts. We're making one of my smoothies. And basically what we have V8 power power grains, which is basic uh, what spinach chard, and I think this one has bok. No, this one's kale chard and spinach. Some of them have bok choy in it as well. I have my three berry blend: blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. More blueberries because blueberries are so good for you. Cinnamon and ginger. I got this at Costco a while ago. This is a protein powder but this is a plant-based protein powder, so you get, you know, different type of protein, and it tastes really good. I already did half of this. I'm gonna put the other half in because I'm making two servings. So, just add ginger. Ginger's one of those spices that's good for you. Uh, I started eating it because it has anti-inflammatory properties, so if you're prone to soreness or stiffness and stuff that can help a little bit. Cinnamon, mostly because it just tastes good. It helps mask the flavor of all the greens. There are some health benefits to cinnamon, but I think that's only in the, like real expensive. And I'm using a little plastic top that weighs next to nothing so that I can weigh it. That's a little over an ounce. And looking in the rest of my bag, I'm just gonna throw all that in there. Or, or not. <laughs> now one trick with the greens, if you buy these huge bags, 
if you're going to be using it to make smoothies, just as soon as you get it home, throw it in the freezer. Because it doesn't really matter what it looks like, but if you leave it in the fridge, stuff goes bad pretty quick. You have to use it within a couple of days to open the bag. But if you throw it in the freezer, you can keep it indefinitely. Uh, one scoop is one serving. I already have one in there. This is the Walmart brand. Cooking with spinach, it has bok choy and chard in it. So it's just slightly different, but spinach and kale are your main ones that you want to use. So actually this one doesn't have kale in it. Mm -hmm. I need to run back to the store and get some kale. I like to use V8 just because it's more vegetables. Uh, there is a lot of sodium in it, but again, you're taking it with a bunch of water too. I mean, there's water in all the berries and all your vegetables. One little tip, if you're doing it like this and everything's frozen, use a warm liquid. So this is just room temperature. And that helps soften everything up when you're blending. And the banana. Bananas are another one of the things, if you're gonna use them for smoothies and stuff, just throw them straight in the freezer. Or if your bananas are starting to look kind of bad, the ones you got on the counter, just go ahead and throw them in the freezer and save them for, that's what I did with this one. I didn't feel like eating it at the time, but it was on the edge of going bad. So I just threw it in the freezer, figured I'd throw it in a smoothie. Oh yeah, that's our Ninja Ultima blender. This thing's awesome. looks really thick so I'm just gonna add water now this is all on what you prefer I prefer these smoothies to be a little thinner makes them easier to drink uh, they, they don't taste bad I mean in fact Maddie likes them this way but they're not exactly the greatest thing on earth so if it's a little thinner then you can chug it faster I made two servings, I'm going to split it up. These little shaker bottles are real nice because if you let it sit after a while, these are actually designed for protein shakes, but that little ball helps mix everything up. Anytime you're dealing with blueberries and raspberries and stuff, you want to be careful not to get it on you or on your clothes because they'll stain everything. That's my little breakdown chart of all the stuff that I'm eating. There's my smoothie. Comes out to about 400 calories. Uh, these are actually going to be a little bit less because as you can see, I still have a fair amount left. So I'd say, but I threw in a banana too. So these are probably around 350 calories. But like I said, I don't really, I'm not worrying too much. I'm not at that point where, you know, I'm in like some sort of fitness contest or I have to get down to 3% body fat or something like that. So I don't, I'm not gonna bother watching every calorie I eat as long as I'm in that 2000 to 2500 calorie a day range. So uh, whatever's left over, clear glass so you can see it. Just go ahead and drink it now. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.